This majestic looking plant here is purple loosestrife and it's a really really beautiful native perennial plant that loves damp feet. You can often find it in marshy areas, by ponds or on river banks. And it is edible, you can eat the young leaves in salads but more interestingly the flowers used to be used as a red hair dye similar to henna. And it's also said that if you soak wood, rope or string in a tea made from this plant that it makes the wood resistant to rot and it makes it much stronger as well. So that I think is pretty cool. This pretty little plant down here is marsh woundwort and it's an edible perennial. And whilst native to the UK, it is invasive in some areas, as you can probably see by this huge patch here. So just be mindful of that if you are planting this up in a small garden. As the name suggests, marsh woundwort has been used as a compress or as a wound dressing for cuts and bruises. And it can also be used as a salve to help to treat arthritis and joint pains as well. This one is a really lovely plant to find. This is motherwort, and it's a really well-known antispasmodic herb that can be used as a cardiovascular tonic. It can help to reduce heart palpitations and help with a rapid heartbeat. It can work quite quickly, so it's really, really great for anxiety and for panic attacks as well. Motherwort can help to reduce cholesterol and prevent blood clots from forming, and it's also used to help regulate the menstrual cycle. Motherwort is very much a healing herb and it can help people through emotional distress and grief. It's also used for divination, particularly for protection spells with pregnancies. And it can also be dried and smoked to help with lucid dreaming and astral projection. Another herb to promote lucid dreaming is mugwort. Again, this is traditionally dried and smoked before bed, but it's also got very, very light psychoactive powers if smoked during the day as well. Like motherwort, mugwort is also used for menstruation. It helps to relax the uterus and regulate the menstrual cycle. As a food source, mugwort has a long culinary history. It's been used as a spice to help flavour beer and it's also been used as a medicinal tea to help to ease digestive complaints. And this plant here is part of the legume family, as you can probably tell by these little cute pea-shaped flowers and these little tiny seed pods. This is goat's root and it grows absolutely everywhere here. Legend has it from the old gardeners on the allotment site that back at the turn of the century, old horticultural traders used to go to the poorer parts of the city, to the factory workers, and sell off all of their undesirable plants like the goat's root and tansy and feverfew. And that is apparently why there is so much of it all over and especially in these fields and woodlands behind the allotment site. Medicinally, goat's root has been used to increase milk production in those breastfeeding, and it's also still used in some modern supplements as well. Please do your own research before using any wild herb medicinally, especially if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, or if you have a weakened immune system. The hogweed seeds have all started to come out now. These are the flowers. These are the green seeds and I've started to see a few seeds actually browning off and ripening now as well. So these have got a lovely citrusy, cardamomy flavour. I've covered these in most of my foraging videos so far because you can harvest pretty much all year round from the hogweed plant. But yeah, these seeds are delicious and I'm mostly using them in baking but they are good for spices and pickles as well. So as a reminder, these are the leaves of the hogweed plant. This is the stem of the hogweed plant and you can see it's got these little tiny hairs on it that are quite soft. Giant hogweed has got mm, it's a bit more spiky kind of hairs or spines on the stem and it will also sometimes have red splotching, which the common hogweed never has. Sometimes the common hogweed can be a little bit purple in the stem but it's never got blotches. A really, really good way to tell the difference is if you see one in flower and it is your height or less, then you can be pretty confident that it's common hogweed because giant hogweed will flower probably over 10 feet tall, up to, up to 15 foot. Every garden is a nightmare, but a plant that I think is quite beautiful. This is bindweed, and it's probably one of the first plants that I ever played with when I was younger. Me and my little brother used to shoot the opened or the unopened flower buds off like little guns and see how far we could shoot them. <laughs> Look at these big old juicy blackberries all coming into season now and I'm quite hungry so I'm going to munch on a few of these. Mm, the raspberries are a lot smaller and a lot fewer 
but they are so much more delicious, aren't they? found a rowan tree. So these rowan berries are just starting to ripen up now and whilst they are a little too astringent to eat raw straight from the tree they do make a really lovely jam and you can use the leftover pulp to make fruit leathers with as well. Rowan berries often fruit at the same time as crab apples and plums so you can use those fruits to sweeten up the jams a little bit if you find them a bit too bitter for your tastes. So the rowan tree is a pretty easy one to identify, it's got a shiny grey bark and these pretty distinguishable pinnet leaves that are made up of opposing leaflets and a terminal leaflet at the end of the leaf there. The berries hang in drooping clusters on the tree and are quite a bright orangey reddy colour and they've got quite a distinguishable little star mark at the bottom and they just look like little tiny clusters of apples. So in stark contrast to the delicate leaves of the rowan tree, we've got the pretty robust and leathery leaves of the hazelnut. And these are hazelnuts. They are actually pretty ripe and ready to pick at the moment. You might be thinking they look a bit pale and not quite ripe, but actually these are the perfect time to harvest if you want to be beating the squirrels to them. Hazelnuts can be harvested as soon as they've turned from their green colour to this kind of whitish colour. And if you pick them and dry them out on a single layer in a dehydrator or really, really low on the oven or just on the side if it's quite warm and dry in your house, they will dry probably in about a week to two weeks. Um, and just make sure they're really, really dry before you do put them into storage. I've still got some hazelnuts that I harvested from last year. And if you do store them properly, then they can last for years. This tree or shrub here is the Gelder Rose and back in spring it had these beautiful big hydrangea-like flowers but now it's got these beautiful big bunches of berries and they're starting off these kind of yellowy orange colour and they'll ripen to a deep red later on in the summer. And these berries, when they are raw, they've got a really gross smell and they're quite toxic. But once they're cooked, they make a really, really lovely addition to kind of roast dinners and sandwiches and things like that. They have got quite a bit of flavour and one that some people may need to get used to, but they are quite delicious. I really wish that you could smell these flowers. They are absolutely divine and probably one of my favorite summer scents. Kind of somewhere between vanilla and almond and the taste isn't dissimilar either. You can use the flowers of Meadowsweet to infuse into milks and creams. They make a really, really lovely cordial and syrup for cocktails as well. They can be used to top your cakes with when you're baking and they've also been used for joint pain and arthritis as well. Oops, sorry Mr. B. I nearly bagged you up then, didn't I? Go on then, go on to this flower. There we go. <laughs> I'm harvesting some of this meadow sweet today to infuse into my rhubarb jam that I'm going to be making later. And also probably a couple of syrups for cocktails throughout the year as well. You want to be harvesting the flowers that are just opened and you want to make sure that you're doing that on a dry day as well because all of the flavour is in the pollen, much like the elderflower and lots of other flowers that you use to make your syrups and things like that with. Meadowsweet's really easy to identify. Um, you can often smell it before you see it, but if the flowers aren't a giveaway or if it's not in flower yet, then it's pretty identifiable by the leaves as well. So the leaves are quite glossy and veined and they've got a terminal leaflet that looks a little bit like a sycamore leaf. So they are quite an easy one to identify. Meadowsweet contains salicylic acid, so much like aspirin, has anti-inflammatory and pain relieving properties. A balm can be made by infusing the crushed plant into oil and mixing that with beeswax or soy wax to make a salve to help treat pain and joint stiffness. Salicylic acid is also a really common ingredient in facial cleansers and spot creams, which makes Meadowsweet a really useful ingredient for homemade cosmetics as well. Probably the last one of the day that I want to show you because it's on the pathway as a walk back home and this is pineapple weed and it is absolutely beautiful little plant. It's in the chamomile family so it has the same kind of calming, soothing, sedative effects of chamomile but this has the added benefit of tasting and smelling just like pineapple. Just about to go home and look at that All right, little jackpot some chanterelles in a new little spot as well. Didn't know they were here. Look at these. There's some big ones here. Oh my god. So sick. I found quite a few. Some of them are a bit past it. 
but there's some nice little fresh babies here. 